I enjoy looking back at history. It's just one of the things I like to see. I like to see how people lived. I like to see the triumphs, uh, the hardships, how they learned from them and how they grew. I think we can take invaluable lessons from that. And I worry that we are going to forget what the Great Depression era taught us as we're getting older. Um, there are still many of us around that have grandparents and parents that lived during that time. So we still were taught many of the lessons that they learned and inherently it's helped us. Um, in our financial situations and I think we need to move forward and continue to teach this. You know, back in 1929, living frugally was a necessity. It wasn't a choice and I don't want anyone to have to get to the point where they have to do something out of necessity. You should be able to choose a certain way and I think that if we choose to look at some of the frugal lessons and take those into current today, that when the next economic recession happens, you're going to end up on the better side of it. So in today's video, I want to talk about some of those lessons and how you can take them into your current life. There are a few concepts that from that time of the Great Depression that I think we can move forward. Um, there are obviously many more, but I wanted to cover just a few of the ones that I thought might be the most relevant to society's spending habits today. You know I love a good statistic, so I've added a few of those, sprinkled them into this uh, information that I'm giving you today, so I hope you enjoy it. I help. I think that statistics and some of those strange um, offhanded trivia kind of things help add to an argument and explain concepts and um, make them stick almost. So the first concept that I want to talk about may seem very basic, but let's talk about kind of the why behind the what. And it's cooking at home. Cooking at home, cooking from scratch, and cooking simply. Now, cooking at home, cooking from scratch, and cooking simply are kind of things that are rarely done. Uh, we eat out a lot. We uh, like to cook from a box or pre-made things. And we like to make complex things that involve 16 different ingredients that we'll never use again. It's just one of those things that's happened. Now, of course, there are always people who do this um, regularly. They, they eat at home and they eat simply. But when we're looking at concepts from the Great Depression, this is definitely one of those. It's also one of the things that um, to talk about is meat. Now, I don't eat meat. My family does. My husband and my daughter eat meat. But back then, it was definitely harder to come by and it was extremely costly. And you're seeing the cost of meat go up now, right? So maybe utilizing some of the things they did then, which was using meat as a side item not versus, versus half of your plate needing to be a big chicken breast, maybe it's only a quarter. You cut that breast in half and you fill up on something else. And the other thing was using fillers. They used fillers, so when they made meatloaf, they put in oats or they put in um, potato, like now you can put in potato flakes, different things to make the meat go further. You know, making the soups and the chilies and things that expand the meat um, into more meals than just a hunk of steak on your plate. Okay, so that might be something to take into consideration when you are meal planning. Now, I read somewhere years ago, so it's probably higher now, that the uh, average cost of a meal out is 300% more than that cost of that meal cooked at home. Now think about that. So for every meal you eat out, you could eat three meals at home. That's a pretty interesting statistic, it's probably again higher now. Now the other thing to think about when you are cooking at home, you're cooking from scratch and you're cooking more simply, is you're cooking healthier. You're cooking healthier for you and your family because you know what's in what you're making. You were there, <laughs> you know that um, they're whole foods perhaps. There's not a ton of butter or sugar or additives that make them taste better, which is what ultimately happens in the restaurants, right? And over time, what this does is it saves you money rather than just in the moment. It saves you money on healthcare. It saves you money on copay doctor visits. And it gives you back one of the um, things that is actually invaluable and you're not replaceable. And that is time on your life. Um, so really being cognizant of what you are putting in your body. Another concept that you can move forward from the Great Depression was really being mindful of how much you use of something making something stretch, using just a bit. 
So you don't have to use necessarily the recommended amount of a product even. Being conscious of how much shampoo you squirt in your hand, how much lotion you use, the squeeze out. You know, you squeeze out too much, you know, I will open the bottle up and put it back in if it too much comes out at one time. Stretching it out, putting a little water in the bottom third of the shampoo that's left and shaking it up, it works just as well and you help stretch it. Chances are you are using too much anyway. Perhaps you try reducing the amount of laundry soap that you use. You don't necessarily have to use what the product label says. Um, you may be using more than it says as well. See, maybe with the laundry detergent, using less if your clothes still come out as clean. Um, being Also making sure that you let the product do its job. That's one of the things that I see. I'll see people use such as uh, an uh, all-purpose cleaner and they'll spray it on their countertop and immediately wipe it off. You may as well just use, have used water <laughs> and wiped it off. Oftentimes, if you do look on the back of those products, they will say, let sit for a certain amount of time. Um, you've seen the scrubbing bubbles commercial. I think about that where you've got, you spread, not saying you need to use scrubbing bubbles. I'm just trying to prove a point here. Put the, the stuff in the toilet bowl and then the, you see the animated the little scrubber things running around. Put the product on and let it sit and do its job then go back and wipe it off. Otherwise, you're just spinning your wheels. Utilities are one of the things that is absolutely going through the roof. I did a video recently on staying warm for the winter, and I think it was something like natural gas is going to go up 33% from last year and 66% from two years ago. Um, so it was a significant increase. I know we have certainly lowered the temperature in our house and said, bundle up because it's going to be a cold winter for sure. But then, you know, conserving on those utilities because those are bills that you can, um, you know, monitor or, or that can fluctuate, right? There are some things in your bills that aren't going to change. Your mortgage, if you have a car payment, your insurance payment may not change, but there are bills that you have control over how much you use. And one of those is utilities being, um, mindful is the most important here, okay? Being mindful. Um, electricity, turning off your lights uh, when you leave a room. Got that from when I was growing up. You know, unplugging appliances, using the dryer less, um, water, setting a timer while you're in the shower, putting a bucket in the shower to collect water to water your plants afterwards. There are so many little frugal tips in each of these categories that certainly you could go back on my channel and watch other videos. But I want to talk about, you know, again, the things that they learned that we have almost forgotten, been so comfortable over the last decade in, you know, the co low cost and maybe higher pay that we've forgotten and we haven't, um, we haven't been mindful of. And, and utilities is one of those. During the 1930s, families still entertain themselves. You know, there was, there's something to be said about in certain times when things just don't feel happy outside, still ensuring that your family has mixed memories and has a good time. I think there was a statistic I read that during the 1930s, one of the things that did increase in sales was makeup. I think it may have been lipstick. I'm not remember that statistic specifically, but it was makeup. And why is that? Because during higher times, you still want something to boost your mood. You still want to, you know, feel good about yourself. So remembering that during times when there's high stress or maybe there is an economic downturn, what can you do uh, on, on a daily or weekly basis or, or whenever to ensure that your family still, you know, smiles, still um, can make memories during that time, doesn't feel, you know, sad or, 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 you know, anxious or worried. So what can you do during that time? And that's cheap entertainment for sure. Um, making sure that you have a good time and you can do so on not a lot of money. Today's entertainment cost going out are crazy. Okay. There it's getting, you know, you try to go to the movies, it's 60 bucks, right? The amusement park going to, um, out to eat, 
as we just talked about. There are many things that you can do to make memories that don't have to cost any or a lot of money. You know, think at home games, uh, board games, car games, outdoor games. Um, we just had a work event and we didn't spend any money. We stayed in the office and did, it was a fantastic idea. We did um, Friendly Feud. It was so much fun. And the questions were aimed around stuff within our company. It was so much fun. I can just tell you because, and what the best part about it was we really got to spend time and get to know each other better. I thought it was just ingenious and it didn't cost any money whatsoever. There are so many apps and online ideas for things that you can do. Just doing a little research that, that key frugal tip there, doing a little research and putting some thought behind it. Um, just even think about doing a movie night at home. You can rent even a movie out on YouTube or on Amazon for, let's say, $3.99. That's certainly better than going to the movie theater with $15 per person, a family of four being $60, um, not including drinks and snacks um, at the movie theater. So thinking about still doing what you can to make those memories, um, Thinking back to you know reading a book, well, what did they do during the Great Depression? So they probably read, they probably um, played card games, they probably went outside and played. Um, there are things that you can do that don't have to cost a lot of money. All right, the biggest thing that we can take from that time, I believe, is a budget. I know what are we talking about? But hear me out because there's apparently a lot of people who don't even think about this. Um, this is one of the biggest ways that you can feel like you have control um, and during times of when you can't control what's going on where you live around you whatever you can do to feel in control is going to absolutely help you out mentally okay so i read a statistic somewhere that said only about 30 percent of people currently utilize budget so that's why i'm saying this <laughs> you might be going duh that just because you do it doesn't mean the other person does it so i mean i'm assuming that the other 70 percent are really good at calculating things in their head and keeping track of their finances right i bet they are not in debt and they live well below their means probably not <laughs> but when the thing about you know looking back at the great depression I bet uh, during the, I know during that time that they counted their cents, right? When they they knew where their money was going. When you can't count on your next paycheck, you darn well better know and be watching what's happening with the money you currently have. So they absolutely did that. I mean, if you if you didn't have the money to buy it then, you didn't buy it versus now. I mean, think about um, there were forms of credit during that time, but the first credit card actually didn't come about until I think 1958, 59, something like that. So they just didn't take out the money. They knew where their money was going. They counted their cents again because they didn't know when that next paycheck was coming in. We've gotten so comfortable thinking that our next paycheck is going to be here when Again, remember back in 2008 when people were laid off, laid off, laid off, laid off. Who knows what's happening or what's going to happen? Be prepared going forward. I would love to hear if you had parents, grandparents, or memories, or learned anything from somebody who was around during the time of the Great Depression. What kind of concepts or ideas do you think would be beneficial now? Share those in the comments and also just stop by and say hi. I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video and you want to help me out, just click on that like button. It certainly does help. You can also subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you back for more videos.